Hey, g'day guys, this is Aussie Stig. Today we're checking out the Asetek SimSport Invicta pedals. And after part one, where we did our unboxing, today we're going to go further and install them on the PlaySeat Sensation Pro. In part one, we unboxed the two units and had a closer look at the pedals from Asetek in Denmark. If you missed part one of the uh, two-part series, I'll put a link up here in the top right-hand corner and you can get a sense of how they're put together and the build quality and thought that Asetek has put into their pedals. Uh, we'll be going through the process of assembling the clutch and throttle and brake units, connecting it up electronically, mounting it to the play seat and then the adjustability of the pedals. We'll be checking out the Race Hub software and ultimately moving on to some talk and drive video. Okay, you might be wondering how the two pedal units are joined together. Asetek supplies two metal rods and these slide into the holes that are cast into the uh, aluminium casting front and back and then it's a simple matter of sliding the two units together, line up the holes, slide them together and then if we see here there's two grub screws, one on either side, we tighten those up, just hand tight, it's tight enough and now we have a single pedal unit. So that's pretty simple, there's not much to it to join them together. The next thing we'll do is hook up the electronic connection underneath the pedals, which is the, um, the connection between the clutch pedal and the brake and throttle unit. So on the underside of the pedals, we can see the wire connecting the two units together. That's usually stowed away in this area here. All you do is unclip the wire from this clip here, remove a plastic tab that's closing this channel off, and then route the wire through. At the top here, there's a plug. That plug can only be plugged in in one orientation, so just be mindful of that. Once that plug's been connected, the two units are connected electronically, and now we can go on and install the uh, pedals on the PlaySeat Sensation Pro. Okay, the PlaySeat pedal deck doesn't correspond with the Asetek drill pattern. It does to a certain extent. The front three slots I can utilize for the front uh, mounting of the pedals and at the rear of the pedals I had to actually drill three extra holes in the pedal deck to accommodate the two uh, Asetek pedal units. Now we've done that, we can go ahead and mount the uh, pedals to the play seat. Uh, once we have the pedals situated on the play seat pedal deck, it's just a matter of using these supplied bolts. There's six of these bolts, they're M5 I believe, and these are used to fasten down the pedals front and rear. And then we just use the uh, nuts and washers that are also supplied and we fasten it down. Just a little side note on the bolt at the front corner of the uh, Asetek pedals. This drill pattern has this bolt slightly offset from the rear bolt. So the rear bolt's more towards the outside of the pedal plate. And this one's actually situated directly under the connecting rod for the uh, throttle pedal. The easiest way to access that bolt is to remove the connecting rod from the pedal arm and then slip out this whole unit. Then we can pass a uh, Allen key straight through it and tighten this bolt up. So it's just a simple matter of removing this clip at the top of the arm, slide out the pin. Once the pin's out, you can take out the whole assembly. And then we're left with just the uh, holding bracket. And you can see here, there's a hole that goes right through, of course. And then just a simple matter of putting your Allen key or whatever you have straight through it and then you can tighten that bolt for a uh, profile rig with uh, T-nuts. For an OEM pedal deck like the play seats, I found that I could just like put my finger on the bolt at the top and then there was enough binding action to actually tighten the nut from underneath. So that's not an issue for most people, you'll be able to leave the connecting rod for the throttle pedal in place and still be able to access this bolt. Plugging in the pedals to the USB-C connection, I routed the uh, USB cable between the front of the deck and the underside of the Thorpe unit and was able to then get a neat finish with it plugging into the ECU at the front of the pedals. So Asetek supplies three different elastomers. Um, we start off with the black, which is the softest one, or more like a road car feel. Then we have the white, which is what Asetek recommends to use straight out of the box. And that is a, uh, a hard compound. And then 
we progress to the green. The green is the hardest compound and according to Acetec that's the closest to a real car fuel that you can get with this elastomer. But the white one is not far under that so as standard from the factory they do fit the white one to the Thorpe system. To swap them out it's just a question of undoing these lock nuts which is also the preload nut so it does double duty and we take that one off and then remove the larger one and then we use the uh, elastomer of choice. In our case we'll be using the white elastomer. So it's just a simple matter of sliding it up into the Thorpe system housing and then threading that on. Then we go ahead and add the lock nut and if we want to adjust the preload we can just turn the larger nut clockwise and that gives us almost no preload. And of course, if you loosen that off and go counterclockwise, it gives you more preload on the pedal before the brake kicks in. Adjusting the preload on the clutch or the throttle pedal, uh, all we have to do is undo the two lock nuts, move them up the threaded section to give us less resistance. And I like it maxed out, so I have it all the way down towards the front of the pedal and that gives us the most resistance. Adjusting the preload is pretty straightforward so there's no hassles there when you're um, setting up your pedals to your own taste. Adjusting the pedal angle, undoing the lock nut at the front here and then either turning it clockwise which gives you more angle and if you turn it counterclockwise obviously it gives you less angle. I have mine set up as they came from the factory so that's about there. In terms of pedal throw, there's a bolt with a lock nut on this as well and that can be adjusted to the desired pedal throw. And that goes for the throttle and the clutch. Uh, the brake pedal doesn't have that. It does have a, 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 an adjustment for uh, pedal angle, but not for the amount of throw. Because it's so hard to push it already, uh, the pedal doesn't travel far, so there's no need for an adjustment there. One thing uh, you will have to keep in mind is when you make any mechanical adjustments to the pedals, they will have to be recalibrated in the software. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for um, installing the Acetec SimSport Invicta pedals on the play seat. Okay guys, let's check out the Acetec Race Hub software and first thing you see after you've downloaded and installed the uh, program is the Acetec Invicta pedals themselves. If you drag your cursor over it, you can move the pedals around just to check them out from any angle and a nice little touch is when you actually press the pedals, each pedal is animated. You can activate the pedals in real time and then see it in the animation. Another cool thing is the LEDs. You can see down the bottom, just in front of the heel rest, there's nothing lit up at the moment. Uh, if I head over to LEDs, you get a colour wheel, which you can obviously change it to any colour you like. And you have a manual on-off switch. The colour wheel lights up, you have the possibility to dim it down or not. And the currently used colour is also displayed on your pedals, so you can just move that wheel around and then adjust it to match your rig or your decor or whatever you like. And obviously you don't have to use it. I like purple, so I'll just leave it on purple. Um, you can just simply switch it off and then it becomes an invisible part of the pedals. Next on to the calibration of the pedals. What we have here is the factory standard settings of 40 bar and the clutch has a 2% dead zone top and bottom. The brake has a 2% dead zone at the top and I have changed the dead zone at the bottom to 5%. So with my foot just resting slightly on the pedal, the actual brake isn't activated until I give it some real pressure. To calibrate the pedals, it's a simple matter of hitting the calibrate button, then press and release the pedal, and then hit complete. We have 100% throttle with a 2% dead zone. And the same applies to the clutch, of course. Calibrating the brake is pretty easy. All we have to do is hit the calibrate button, apply the amount of bar that you want to have as your maximum pressure level. Just push the pedal until the pedal hits 40, release it, it stays there at 40, then hit complete. Now the pedal's calibrated. So to get to 100%, that's 40 bar of pressure at the uh, brake pedal. And then we go to pedal maps. And this is where you can change the curves. There are some presets here for you. Obviously, you can grab each point and then change the pedal curve yourself. I've left it all linear. As per the recommendations of Acetec, they say in their user guide to try the pedals as they come from the factory and as they're set up in the software as well. And over here in the sidebar, there's a couple of extra icons in the pit. I'm guessing they're for some future use. 
All right, that was a quick little spin around the Acetec Race Hub software. Next up, we'll be heading into our talk and drive sections of the video. Let's get on the grid and uh, start this AI race and see if we can't uh, beat the Porsches around Spa. And I'll give you my real-time impressions. So pardon my bumpy voice at some points. Uh, we are using the D-Box system. Straight away, I'll go to the left of the circuit. Turn one's always a mess, even in an AI race. Heading down to Arouge now. Usually at Arouge the AI is slow, so I will hang back a little and then pass them on the straight because it's the only way to do it. There's no point fighting with cars uh, up Arouge, they just get in your way and uh, crash into you. Uh, coming to the end of Camel Straight now, we're going to hit the brakes quite hard, outbrake that bloke. Crew Chief's telling me I'm locking my front right brake a lot. So far the pedal is extremely hard to press. There's a slight amount of travel. There's probably a centimetre and a half of travel before um, full brake pressure is achieved. And the feedback I get from the brake pedal is that the, uh, the pads are pressing up against the disc, which is what Acetec is trying to achieve with their hydraulic system. And I have to say, it does feel like that. But the real tests are at the end of long straights, like coming up to the bus stop chicane. At 100 metres, I'm going to give it full pressure and then while I'm downshifting, ease off the brake just before the apex. And we easily manage to hit the apex on the uh, chicane without a problem. I do find with the brake that I can brake later. Because you can trail brake and modulate the, uh, the pedal easily, you can out brake most cars for turn one. We can uh, brake quite late and then just ease off the brake and uh, get enough rolling speed to uh, take the corner quickly. And now we're taking uh, our rouge flat out. Quite happy with uh, the performance so far. Yeah, the Acetec pedals are definitely giving me the uh, confidence to brake late and to brake hard. You don't have to be afraid you're going to brake the pedal or brake the system. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the brake pedal. The hard pedal is something I'm used to anyway. It does give you confidence that you can stamp on the brake and then use your muscle memory to release the pedal gradually so you can trail brake properly. So practicing with this pedal, I've generated some muscle memory that doesn't apply to other sim racing pedals. Now I have the uh, throw on the throttle pedals quite short. We're talking about four to five centimeters from zero to 100% throttle. Where the pedals really shine is in heavy braking situations. They really do give you that feeling of rapidly slowing the car down. Uh, at the same time, you can trail brake really easily, which is really good. Okay, we're in the 962C long tail at Le Mans and we're about to do a little bit of heel and toe driving. This is a really old school car with quite heavy steering and we have to do a lot of rev matching to um, slow the car down properly. And it is quite physical, so we're gonna come up to the, the last chicane before the start finish. You have to get at least 50% throttle application when you're heel and towing to match the revs of the engine. The soles of your shoes don't really slide off the pedals that easily and with heel and toe you sort of have to have a little bit less friction in my opinion. This is where the two stage brakes come into their own. Braking for the first chicane on the Molson straight, that went pretty well. Yeah, this car is really brutal to drive, even when you're at speed. You can only imagine what it was like in real life. Out of all the driving, this is the uh, technique that you have to get used to the most with this pedal because it's so hard. You're not really applying much brake pressure while you're heel and towing. It's another type of muscle memory. You really have to get used to um, the hard pedal in this sense. You could swap out the elastomer for the black one, but then it's no longer a racing car feel. Yeah, the speeds are way higher in this Porsche. Slowing the car down takes a lot of effort. You will find with these uh, pedal faces that um, a heel and toe session will result in some pieces of rubber around your heels. Just be prepared for that. Okay, we're back in the Porsche RSR on the uh, Nordschleifer Enduro Cup layout and we'll just continue our talk and drive and see if we can't come up with a few more uh, observations. I have to say straight away, the brake pedal does give you so much confidence to brake the car in a stable manner. So braking in a nice straight line, the car doesn't squirm around underneath you. It does keep it nice and settled before the corner. And the real test will be on the Nordschleife for proper as soon as we get on there. With all those really long straights and uh, very heavy braking zones. 
speaking of which, coming up to the chicane here. It's also a bit of a tricky one. Okay, now we're rejoining the Nordschleifer. Up to third, then down to second for the first corner. Probably one of the bumpiest circuits you'll ever be on, especially in real life. The D-Box system really does replicate how bumpy the uh, Nordschleifer really is. Obviously you don't get the compression in the dipper and uh, other sections of the track, but overall it's quite a immersive experience. So this is where I find the brakes work really well is when we head down the first main straight and then we have the really heavy braking zone for the tight right hander which is coming up now just when the um, the asphalt changes colour that's when you have to really plant your foot on the brakes and then slowing from 280 k's an hour down to about 100 or so in a matter of metres the uh, Acetec brake pedal really does the job well. Now, even if you have a light touch with your left foot, you can modulate the brake in the uh, areas where there's only light pressure required. You can use light pressure. You don't have to constantly push the pedal as hard as you can. But that's the beauty of the uh, hydraulic system. The feedback through the pedal is almost real car-like. And you know when you can uh, apply more pressure when it's needed. And you don't have to worry that there's uh, nothing left after you've push the pedal as far as it can go. The extra pressure that you apply does result in more braking. Even though it feels like there's no travel in the pedal, there is enough in reserve to um, continue braking if you miss a brake point and you have to brake a little bit harder. You can still do that with this pedal. As far as the clutch and the uh, throttle are concerned, they're fairly standard in how they feel. But dare I say, generic. And in that sense, what you'd be accustomed to with a high-end pedal set their operation is smooth, so where that's concerned, you don't have to handle them with kid gloves either. Even coming up to like sweeping corners where you just have to dab the brake to get the front to turn in, it really is just a simple dab on the brakes. All the lap time that you gain is mostly through being able to use the muscle memory you've built up with this pedal and then apply the uh, appropriate amount of pressure which in turn helps you judge exactly where and when to brake and by how much. Are there things that could be improved on these pedals? Because no product's 100% perfect. I would say for me, the main areas of improvement would be the heel rest. Uh, the heel rest has an outwardly rounded curve to it and it's quite low and uh, if you're racing in uh, racing boots or racing shoes you'll know that the, um, the heel is also rounded outwardly so resting your heel on the uh, rounded heel rest there's not much of a contact patch for your uh, shoe or boot which can be uncomfortable. Acetec could have made that curve concave instead of convex, which would have meant you had a more of a 90 degree lip just to give you a little bit more area to rest your heel on. Another thing I would have liked to have seen is a uh, harder throttle spring. I would have liked to have at least a 50% harder spring. And the pedal faces, they are quite sharp. With two foot braking, it's not such an issue because your feet sort of remain on the pedals most of the time so looking at it from the perspective of uh, heel and toe i would say the uh, the pedal faces that were shipped with the acetex are a little bit too grippy for heel and toe driving that's not to say that they're not conducive to heel and toe driving it's just that they're quite grippy but like any uh, new sim racing equipment there is a period of adjustment and getting used to how the equipment operates, what its limitations are and what you can and can't do with them.
Let's move on to my final thoughts on the Asetek Sim Sport Invicta pedals. I've had the opportunity to spend uh, two to three weeks straight with these pedals, and straight off the bat, I have to hand it to Asetek for their first attempt coming up with a very decent set of high end sim racing pedals. The hydraulic brake system of the Invicta pedals is unique. Hydraulics aren't unique in sim racing, of course. There are other pedal sets that employ uh, hydraulic reservoirs and hydraulic systems, but the Asetek approach is very unique in sim racing. It did help that they uh, modeled their pedals on a real world race car feel, which does translate to sim racing. I can safely say the hardness of the brake is an asset and not a disadvantage at all. Uh, for most people that aren't used to hard brake pedals, there is a learning curve. But that muscle memory is quickly learned and you're able to apply it in any sim racing title that it supports. I would say style wise the pedals are quite utilitarian in how they look. Everything's there for a purpose. All three pedals are adjustable for pedal angle. The clutch and the brottle are adjustable for pedal angle and pedal throw. The brake obviously because it's a hydraulic system there's only a preload that you can adjust that gives you a little bit more travel on the pedal. Um, with the other two pedals there's preload and throw adjustment. One thing that's not possible on either a OEM rig or a profile rig is adjusting the pedal spacings laterally. Uh, the pedal arms themselves, they are in fixed positions in the pedal deck. You can adjust the pedal faces, which is a good compromise. Acetec have really done their homework and the brake pedal feels bulletproof. The other two pedals, the throttle and the clutch pedals are smooth in their operation and feel on par with most uh, high-end sim racing pedals that I've tried previously. Uh, just beware, you will have a learning curve. You will need to uh, learn how to brake with the hard pedal as it does have far less throw than the normal pedal set does. When people talk about modulating the brakes, it's just a matter of millimetres. You're not talking about almost completely releasing the brake to modulate them. It really is literally millimetres and kilograms of pressure that makes the difference. They really have been able to improve my lap times and I can attribute that to a fair amount of practice with these pedals and having gotten used to them quite quickly as I am used to using a hard pedal anyway. The overall performance of these pedals is up there with the best of them at the moment. The Thought brake system is very unique. There are a few minor things that I would like changed. I would like the uh, heel rest to be at right angles to the pedal deck and not rounded. Maybe slightly higher because when I'm racing in the motion rig my heel can slip over the top of the heel rest. Another thing that could be improved for me is the throttle spring. Uh, I would have preferred this spring to be at least 50% harder, which gives me more throttle control. Another thing that you might want to consider is the pedal faces. If you have uh, soft-soled uh, racing shoes, rubber racing shoes, there is some abrasion there and you will end up with uh, fine pieces of rubber at the base of your heels. But they're all minor things, they're nothing that would be a deal breaker for anyone that is looking for such a high-end set of pedals. Yeah, so my compliments to Asetek. I find their first attempt at offering the sim racing market high-end pedals to be a very positive one. If you were to buy these pedals, you would definitely not be disappointed. They do deliver on what they're trying to achieve. The hard pedal might not be for everyone. It does take a little getting used to. After a few hours with the pedals, you'll get the hang of how the pedals operate and you'll find yourself trail braking a lot easier. I'd like to thank Acetec for providing me with a set of Invicta pedals to review for you guys. And if you like this video, please do help support the channel and hit the like and subscribe button. And stay tuned for more to come from Aussie Stig.